Welcome to video eight of 10. Today we're gonna do the first coat on beads. I'm Cody with Up to Code. And I'm Camille. Okay, you ready to uh, learn a new trick and a new skill? I am, yeah. Okay, so well, let's just jump into it. We're gonna do the first coat on all these beads and basically right now, it's gonna take a lot of mud. It's gonna take a few days to dry. Okay. But after this, the rest is, we're clear sailing after this. Sounds good. Okay. Good. I loaded up my hawk a little too much, a little too early. I have a few things I want to say first. Good thing my mud is fairly thick. You want it thick on your first coat because it is so thick and heavy. You don't want it shrinking back too much. It's just the right consistency. It's not falling off the hawk, but uh, yeah, I can still work with it. It's not, it's still easy to work with. Let's put it that way. One thing I wanted to mention that I didn't actually get a chance because of all our tapes were working out extremely well so far is we haven't had any air bubbles in any of our tapes. Today will be a good test to see if we have any air bubbles behind our beads. Now, basically, yeah, I gotta apologize because I, I can't show you what an air bubble looks like behind the tapes. We didn't have any, so that shows that Camille and I actually did a pretty good job so far. Right now, I'm just gonna scratch any high points off with my, putty, with my knife, get rid of any potential hitchhikers, then we'll just start coating. I'll get into the technique as I go along here. <clears throat> when I did this super butt joint, I didn't really describe it too well because I knew we were gonna do this video by itself anyway. For now, <clears throat> I just need to get rid of some of this mud on my hawk because you're gonna start grouping. So that actually went pretty well. <laughs> I made it look easy, <laughs> even yeah, for myself. <laughs> Doing both sides of a corner bead is tricky, I find. It's really tough. It's, I basically get to a point where I just wipe both sides so I'm not making a mess and then I just leave it to one final swipe on each side and that way I try to just prevent a giant mess going on. When I load this trowel up, I'm just loading it up, but I only wanna go maybe 10 inches or I don't want to do the full width of my trowel just yet because on my second coat, oh boy, oh, I almost lost it. On your second coat, you have to go a little bit wider. So don't go full max width right now. I'm just going to apply it. Now, because this top bead isn't very wide, I'm just going to load up the top half. It probably, it still might. Like, like bird poop, just a lucky drop. I'm just getting the mud on there. I'm applying it. It's way too thick. And we all know that. I'm gonna just drag it back this way, just to kind of get rid of any air bubbles. Basically trying to get it to the, the same consistency all the way through, even though it's still thick. I'm gonna load up a little bit here and just fill this a bit more. Oh boy. You get to see Cody in action, flaws and all. So if you have something like that happen to you where it's really hollow, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just pull it down like this And I'll show you when Camille does it as well. Okay, I've got it fairly well applied. Just doing a light little bit now. Now I'm getting close to where I actually will do my final wipes. So I'm going to cut off this edge. So I'm going to put all my weight on the right hand side of my trowel. 
I've cut that. I'll do the same with the top here. Now when you're doing your first coat, I always like to hold my trowel as square as possible, like this. I want to keep the mud nice and straight. If I go flat, my trowel has more flex and I'll actually dish the mud out. I don't want to do that. I want it nice and square and flat. So once I get past that corner, ooh, try to hold it as square as I possibly can. I'm actually going to go this way. Helps me stop the chatter. Okay. Now with this bottom, same thing. I'm just going to get past this inside corner, square it up. Boom. I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to play with it anymore because I feel like it's really full and, and square. It's not dished in. It's not, I didn't flex my trowel too much. I'm going to leave that and continue on. And then once I get past and down around that corner, then Camille's going to take over. All right. Again, just application. See how that's super hollow. You can just load it up like this if you want. Crazy thick. Okay, that's pretty close. Okay, you're gonna If I keep it loaded onto my trowel, then I could just go move it towards the outside where I'm missing mud. Just go like that, load up the top side of my trowel and just squish it into that corner. I'm going to move it that way and fill up that outside of it. Just going to clean up this corner a little bit for now. And I'm just going really light because I want to do one pass and be done with it. So I want everything really close. I'm going to just do one real light pass on the top here. I think I'm pretty close. Now, <clears throat> I didn't describe it well enough yet. You can see I'm applying my mud and I probably have two inches of my trowel left over. I'm not maxed way out like this because I'll leave. So this will be my first coat. It gives me like an inch or two of overlap. So that way when I do my second coat, I go past all this mud over here and I just blend it out to nothing. So let's cut all these edges off. I'm going to try to keep my trowel nice and square. That worked pretty good. Same here. Once I get out of that inside angle, keep my trowel nice and square. 
doesn't have to look super pretty because you're going over it one more time. So you can see after the first coat, the mud isn't dished in too bad. It's actually relatively straight to the trowel and that's what you want. You want it nice and full, less shrinkage. And then the second coat's just that much easier. And then even right here, you can tell that when we applied this bead, that bead was actually a little bit lopsided this way. And we don't have as much coverage over top of that paper, but I think it'll be okay after we do the second coat but that's just when you're setting your beads, you constantly have to be checking to make sure you're centered. Otherwise you get stuff like that going on. Before I give this to you, do you okay. have any questions? No, I think I'm okay. You just jump into it? I think so. Okay, yep. I'll try to guide you as best I can, but you basically it's apply it first and wipe it off after. Oh my goodness. It's like first day with my... All hollow. What was your other trick? This way. That way, yeah. And I went right into your work. And if you do that way, what's one thing that I would be mindful of? If you're gonna do it that way, that's totally cool. Is get an idea, be like, okay, this is how wide I want my mud to be. So I want it, let's say that wide, I'm gonna end it here. And I want it this wide down here, so I'm gonna end it here. And then, same thing this way, you want about that much. And then that way you can keep it even. You can start out here, have it like barely any mud and go thicker, thicker, thicker as you get to the corner. Okay. And that way your width is relatively even, and you get those, you wanna to try to maintain some nice straight lines. Yep, that's good. That's, I remember doing that lots when I first started, basically self-taught, is I gotta get it on the wall. And... I just got it over my knee. <laughs> <laughs> and then more mud. You okay. have a little scooper to do it. I'll be your scooper boy. I'll be your young Padawan learner. <laughs> Oh, you gotta load it up. Be brave. Do I? Be brave. Do or do not. That is the question. Oh my goodness. Do you see that flaw? <laughs> <laughs> Don't okay. touch it. Yeah. Cause it'll have dirt in there. You'll have a hitchhiker galore. Oh my goodness. How do you get that? I'm going to leave that trick for you to tell the people at home. Oh, How do you get that so mud hard? off? I'm just going to get rid of it. Throw it in the garbage. This way seems so hard for me for some reason. <laughs> I throw it in the gutter and I go by. <laughs> oh my goodness. I totally missed it. Yeah, you did totally miss it. You did? I don't know if I'm like, you just can't do like the wiping but oh yeah i just scooped up a huge thing put it all over the floor <laughs> so can i cut that other side to get more mud on my i would thing? just you might as well apply the rest there and then start trying to get it consistent oh i see what you're saying yeah you could give that right hand side a wipe and then any excess you could haul off to the left Just... Okay, how about I give you a tip before you start? Make sure you have about two inches of your trowel overhanging over the corner. Okay. And start a little lower and then just hook it. Yep. And just kind of float it. Doesn't have to be super hard. You basically want it real consistent. And you're gonna have to. Have hmm. to. Do it harder. You, you want to make sure that, oh shit, we're all over the place here. You have to make sure that you're not too thick off your bead. Like you always want to be, like I can tell because I'm obviously have a little more experience, but yeah, like 
you're actually not too bad. You're right on the bead here. So you need to fill this middle up because you can see how hollow it is. Let's see if I can teach you Cody's method. Oops, right. Sorry, my right, lady. I've got nine more. <laughs> Let's do this, Camille. You see how the width of my mud on the hawk? Mm -hmm. Just scoop it in the middle. Okay. And then, basically, because we need more of the mud in the middle, even if you go like this and just get it, just get it in place. The cordy in it on. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do that on the super thick stuff. Here, I'll let you try. Hang, overhang it. Yeah, overhang it. And just, and then as you move up, keep rolling it flatter, flatter, flatter to the wall. Yep. Okay. Now you can start at the bottom and just even pressure and just try to wipe some of that excess off. That's really good. See? I think you do it on purpose. Oh yeah. You make it look like you're struggling. You're struggling at the beginning, but then you do And really then cut it on that side or just apply this um, side first. Do one more wipe just straight up and down. Try to put a little more pressure on the right hand side if you can. Better if you don't have the hog. That's pretty good, man. That's really Except good. Except for my little woo-woo. You, you, you could just go over that lightly. Cause you're... Okay. Now let's get that other side shaped up a little better. Yeah, this is my tricky part. If you tilt your trowel or your hawk, yeah, there you go. You're getting it. <laughs> well, if you look back on some of my old videos, I, I did lots laugh. of editing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just try to wipe it off. Yep. I should have brought that down a little lower for you, but it's not too bad yet. No. Okay, this is what I would do right now. Young. I'll clean that. Pat my Pat a one learner. Right now, I would just take the width. Take, get the width that you want and just do that. Do one light wipe. There, it's fairly well applied. I need a little bit more right there. I'll just keep it on the left hand side a bit. Okay, I'll let you keep going. This one? That would, that's how I would do it, I think, if I was a righty. Just have to be quicker. There you go. Yes, you're getting that technique. Yep, perfect. Oh my goodness. Let's just dent the other side of the wall over here. It's a make work project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We want more videos. <laughs> like at all giving you an aneurysm? Uh, you're going a little too wide now, but that's, we'll get her. Is We're going to get her. Okay. Okay. She, she's on. I would wipe, because you're too wide, just give her. You do you. Do I need to, do I need to cut this one? Yeah, you cut it. Cut it for sure. You're too wide, so you need to cut it off anyway. Okay, I would stop. Because you're going to start digging out of your work there. Okay. Can I do this? Yeah. There. Okay. Now give that 
that bottom half just a good old wipe and make sure it's full enough. With my trowel hanging yep. over? Yep, leave your trowel over hanging, yep. Nice. Okay, perfect. Now switch to the other side and we'll try to get the excess that's billowing over the corner. So tricky doing, here I'll just do that for you. Doing these, look at all my cornering. Just hit it lightly both sides and we're just trying to get that excess off. That's what we're gonna do right now. Uh, I would still wipe it normal, just wipe it like flat on the wall. Yeah, don't do anything funky because you might dig your work out. Perfect, stop there. Yep. Wipe that off. Once you get a bunch of that off, then we'll stop and we'll try to. Okay, stop. Dang. I don't know how to teach not to do that. I don't know how to, how to not do that either. It's just we do have pretty good excess. I'm just going to try to wipe it like that. And I'll go like this right on the corner. Tricky, tricky. Okay. Okay. I would do... Try to cut those two edges off. In, in out, these outside ones? Yeah, cut that outside edge. Okay, stop. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Perfect. Do you hold it this way? Uh, or do you hold it this way? I hold it that way. Yeah, so you get, yep, push it. Hold it more square to the wall, more 90. Yeah. Well. That's a nice angle. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I caught something. It'll chatter sometimes on you. Okay, do that side. Let's check out this spot because it's looking a little funny to me. But the best way is just to hold your trowel on there. I don't know. It's pretty flat. It's just my... That corner bead's a little rounded off and there must be just a little hump or something in this drywall. But the trowel is true. So you've done a good job actually troweling it all off. A little bit heavy at the beginning, yeah. but that's just something that you learn as you go on is just getting that consistency down. But Basically, it's applying it, getting it consistency or consistent, and then getting it just so it's a hair too thick, and then that final wipe. But yeah, it took some doing, but... It did take a little bit of doing. It looks pretty good. My, some of this wavy, if it looks a little ugly, as long as it's straight and it's not proud or sticking out, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It'll shrink back, and then your second coat, you'll be better. Okay. and it'll finish better. And this stuff, you can just sand off these little edges after? Yeah, those little corners you can knock off. Okay. Yeah. Now, when we did the butt joints, I did this super corner bead, super butt joint thing, but I just want to show you how straight it ended up being. My first coat on this bead is pretty darn straight. And that's because I didn't lean on my trowel flat against the wall. I tried to hold it more square. I also want to show you, let's see if I did a good job on this butt joint. If you can see, I'll just slide it along the wall.
doesn't really rock anywhere and there's no major daylight so that's pretty flat when I do the second coat it's basically just skimming over top of all that and when I second coat this I'll just go a hair wider it does it's gonna dry really quick because it doesn't need to shrink back it's not super thick anyway let's get on to these we haven't touched a whole bunch on this because we haven't had the opportunity I'm this no coat worked out really well on this inside angle so we're going to treat it more like a tape and less like a bead therefore i don't need to go as wide i'm going to start off with my four inch for the first coat actually you know what i'm going to do i'm going to get away with one coat just like an angle i'm going to do a six inch on here one day a few days later i'll do the other six inch those are done on the tear away we'll do two coats we'll do a four inch and then we'll do a six inch on the last coat that's what we're going to do first off i just got to scratch off all the high spots i'll do this side of this angle first and then that way I can do this as a second coat and then I can do this later. I'll do the top half, Camille can do the bottom half. And I think it's more about getting small amounts, loading your knife and just doing a little bit of it at a time so you don't have that over spill over to the other side. And same thing as when we applied this no coat, you just want to make sure that your knife is always on that inside corner. Because if you swerve in and out, your mud is going to be thin, thick, thin, thick. If you're not comfortable with cutting it off, let's try not cutting it and I'll just do a straight white. Okay. Same thing as coating a bead. I'm going to try to hold it a little more 90 degrees to the wall. The corner of my knife is in the inside 45. Wipe it once. Leave it. The excess on the other side, as long as it's not crazy, if it was more than that, I'd have to clean it up. But with that, I'm just going to leave that little bit this little excess I'll just clean off and that we'll get later I'll do this top tear away and then you can finish finish you the day off one side of that treating that like an angle yeah okay yeah just one side at a time because then next time it can overflow onto the other side clean it up should be good because we're doing two coats on this tear away I'm going to do a four inch now and a six inch later. And here might be a, you might want to load up the, a little heavier on one side of the knife than the other, just to fill this up. But you got to be careful. Remember, this is our super nice wood wall that we got and we can't get mud on it. So you got to be careful with your application. See a little more mud on the side that's towards the thicker part of this tearaway. And now that that's hollow there, I can literally just load up that one edge. Keep going you're on a roll <laughs> <laughs> i can if i if you're careful you just cut like half an inch off of there let's see if that works now remember we're riding on top of that little plastic ledge and that allows to fill over top of that all those holes in the tearaway 
Now just be careful, if you have too much mud, it might start billowing over. But if you have it even enough, you can do it in one wipe. I'll just clean that excess off. Yeah, that's, yeah, just little bits at a time is probably easier. And you want to make sure that you have it out there? Yep, you want it even the whole way. Yep, it's probably better just to re-scoop and go over it again. Yep. It's hard to get right in that corner. It is. Right in that angle. That looks better. Perfect. Except for all my hangies on the other side. That's okay. I think we'll get those. And you can just clean that little chunk off to the left. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if he was alive? No, he's pretty celibate. Yeah. yeah, I like your application so far. Little bits at a time. We gotta protect our nice, beautiful wood wall. We do. We were not being facetious at all. <laughs> we do have a beautiful wood wall. I'm pretty slow at this. That's okay. You're actually, it's going really well. You're not doing the side to side application anymore. You're doing the up and down. Oh, I just banged up our wood wall. Oh, if you hit it with the sponge real quick. Oh, see, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you got her. That's why you have the bucket and the sponge and the water for cleanup. Not enough. What the? Nope. <laughs> And then now I can just go over it lightly. I would go over it lightly just to get it a little more consistent and then hopefully one more after that to execute it. Just, you know, she can tell she's getting pretty heavy on the bottom side there. Mm -hmm. And then one more? You could do one more all the way up and just execute it. Look at that, like a boss. Bro. Like a boss. So coating is all done, but I now is the time. I did see an air bubble. I want to show you guys. Basically do an inspection, and right here, this is what an air bubble is going to look like. I don't know if you can tell, but right from there to there, if I push on it with my knife, you can see it's hollow. So what I'm going to do, just for today, I'm going to cut that. I'm not going to fill it yet. I'm going to wait until this mud dries. I don't want to wreck my work, but I'll just tuck some taping mud in behind all those hollow spots, try to get it full and then let that cure set back. And then I'll just touch up that little spot, catch up the first coat. And then once, if I have a bunch, I'll fix them all, patch it all with coating mud and then get it all really close and then the second coat will just fill everything and be really good. Oh yeah, there's a little bit here too. See, that's solid, but right here, a little tiny hollow spot. 
So if I cut it out now and identify it, I know for next time just to give that a fill. It's solid where the actual metal part of the bead is, which is nice. So I just cut the loose paper and I can fill that. Actually same here, the corner, the metal part of the bead is solid. If it's hollow behind the actual metal, then you have to put mud in behind. But if it's just a little bit of paper now and then, I'll just cut out the loose paper. When that's dry, just fill those in a bit and catch up that first coat. So after your inspection, then you're done for the day. And you can let this dry. Because it's the first coat, and because I'm super stickler on all of my corner beads, I want to let this dry like a couple, two, three days. That way it's shrunk back really well. When we apply the beads, we are probably three or four days to let the mud in behind the beads cure. So we have no, we don't have to worry about anything about the shrinkage. Let this cure really well. And then when we do our second coat, it won't shrink back a month from now. Because that's my biggest thing is if you're trying to speed it up and do it really quickly, then let's say you put your beads on one day and you do your first coat the next day. And then you do like three days later, you do your second coat in a month. That'll shrink back and you'll see all that metal corner because all that mud will just keep shrinking over a month or two. So it'll look like... If you don't properly cure it, it'll yeah. just keep going. It'll just shrink. So you think it's good, flat, looks awesome. You'll paint it two months later, it'll shrink back and you'll see all those metal parts of all the beads. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is with the way this set has gone, we don't need to do that because it'll be a few days before to let this cure. And yeah, two coats will fully finish these beads out and there won't be any shrinkage later on. Okay, okay long-winded story. Okay, so sorry to put you through another new technique and range of motion. You, but you did that pretty was, good. That was tricky. That one was harder than yeah, I thought it was, was going to be. Yeah. It but, was more applying the mud than doing anything right. with the ink. Once you get it close, the last wipe, you did awesome, right? But yeah. If you were doing more, if you did even all of this yourself, or if you had two or three beads, you would have caught on really well and it, you've been off to the races. But Perfect. Yeah, so thanks for going through that with me. Yeah, thank you. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you.